Um, yes, hello everyone. My name is um, Oksana Danziger. I'm a textile artist uh, working in the different fields of uh, textile art. And one of my favorite is Nuna Felting. So um, Nuna Felting is an ancient uh, technique which has lately become very popular and um, has an interesting modern twist on that. But um, I'll be talking about just basic of Nuna Felting, how it's done. And once you know the basic, I guess you can take it to uh, uh, further and uh, do something more interesting with that. But um, in the beginning, I want to show you a couple examples. So behind me, this is uh, Nuna Felted panels uh, made as uh, samples, and then I echo print on them. So as you see the images of um, leaves on that and some um, eucalyptus leaves, um, but it just showed you idea how many different ways you can use it. Um, also, I'll show you a couple um, samples. So I'm going to try to show it you a little closer. So um, using finer um, wool, it creates really uh, fine surface. As you see, it's very soft. Um, so this is like 19 micron um, wool. The finest wool, the better it's bind and um, then it's easier to make it to like very soft, uh, you know, textile. Um, you can also use a bunch of different textures. I don't know if you can see it here. So this is just manipulating and working with, um, see like in the back of it is different color. So almost like a watercolor effect when the background color is, um, you know, looking through the top layer. And then, you know, you can use embroidery on top and uh, different ways. So like those uh, pieces was created by um, putting a little marble in the middle and tying it. And then in the end, when I finished the, uh, uh, the sample, I would cut it out so you can see the color from the back uh, showing on the front uh, surface. Um, you can use also, um, yarn. So yarns uh, put between two pieces of uh, um, wool, they can create like a sandwich, which is going to hold any fabric or any uh, yarn you put in between. So it's, it's endless there, uh, you know, different ways you can work with that. So see this texture was created by putting um, uh, you know, a little, um, a little bit of uh, fabric underneath. So again, like sandwiching in between, and then you create something like this. And look, the back is completely different color. Um, also, you can work uh, uh, pieces of fabric in. So see, like this piece is just kind of incorporated into the main body of your sample. So, and that's very helpful to do it in the beginning when you start your project. So you can experiment and see what uh, texture you like. So this is another fun texture. As you see, it's like completely transparent because all this, uh, um, you know, the wool was laid on transparent fabric. And again, uh, the wool grabs to the fabric and putting, um, you know, like, for example, plastic around it creates this ornament, like the, the little dots. So uh, this is another example for working on the fabric, as you see. So the fabric is transparent itself, but whenever I put wool, it grabs to it. And I also embellish it with a little bit of uh, textured thread. So this is just to kind of, excite you and get you interested in this technique. But uh, of course we have to start with the base. And uh, uh, the base is, we start with materials. So <clears throat> the first one, of course, it's wool. This wool is called rowing. 
So it's a very fine wool. This one particular is 19 microns. And you probably see it even here how fine it is. It's pretty clean. Um, so why is that important that, at least in the beginning, that the wool will be fine quality? Because when you separate uh, you know, the wool, see the longer this part uh, you know, of this uh, wool uh, connected threads, the better the connection between next layer. So you're basically creating the surface by laying over other, mm, other piece on top of it. And those loose ends, they connect and grasp together. So this is the wool. I mean, again, you can use a little rougher, but it will be a little harder um, to connect. Um, I'm using um, a net. Sometimes, you know, this is the gauze and this is like a simple net just to put it over your wool when it's loose. So it's easier to combine together. Um, all towel, you know, this is, uh, any towels is good. You know, when you're doing big projects, you can use these big towels, like as pool towels. I, you know, and uh, bubble wrap. So simple bubble wrap um, with the bubbles. We're going to be using with the bubbles up. Um, what else? Um, so see, I'm trying to use like simple materials everybody can find in their home. This is regular water bottle. Uh, what I did, I make a um, few uh, holes on top of it um, and inside of it, warm water with um, uh, detergent, with dishwashing detergent. You just put a little squirt of detergent and you see some bubbles in there. Um, so we, it's easy because when we're going to be applying it, it's it's not gonna pour, but it's gonna come out from the hole. So you can kind of have a little control over it. Um, you need some rubber bands just to secure the ends of, um, you'll see the next step, but we'll, we'll do a little bundle where that's how uh, Nuna felt it, uh, fabric gonna bind together and we're gonna roll it. So uh, rubber bands for that, um, gloves or, um, any plastic you can put on the hand. It's just easier to work with the surface uh, because it's more slippery. And um, also in the end of the project, we would need to use like a regular soap bar, just cut them in small pieces. So, you know, it's more, it's more convenient, but any regular dove or, you know, any like olive, um, Olive oil bar is the best, but if any regular soap would work fine too. So this is, um, and uh, you know, to uh, begin with, as you see, this is like 10 by 10 piece. Any project I start with, I do a sample. The reason why I do that, because, um, you know, the, the wool, uh, while you're mending it, it's gonna shrink. So, whatever project you do and you have to know how much it's going to shrink. So taking this piece 10 by 10 makes it easy because um, then, you know, uh, let's say on average, it shrank like 30%. So let's say this piece, a piece I did before. Um, so it's now, if you compare to the size of it, you see it shrinks 30%. So um, it's nice to know because, for example, if you decide to do a close, so you you know how much your coat will be smaller. Otherwise, you're gonna end up giving it to some kid to wear uh, because it it does shrink. Um, so I'm gonna put my um, camera now on on the working space, and I'll be talking. Um, when I will be, uh, you know, presenting my workshop. So here we go. This is uh, this is our um, bubble wrap um, bubble wrap square. Now, when 
um, using the wool, um, it's very important the way you work with it. So you don't try to forcefully separate it. What you're doing, you're just putting your thumbs and then you're very gently kind of holding in, but releasing on another side. See what's happening? See how long it's no force. They separate by itself. This is important because that part which make connection between the wool stronger. So, and first I'm going to be, um, you know, laying all all this uh, all this wool horizontally. See how other each uh, next layer is kind of laying on top of it. So that's what creates the bond between between all this wool fibers. So also I use um, I use the orange color of my bubble bubble wrap because see you can see clearly because somewhere where I can see orange I may add just a little bit. So in the beginning. Um, you know, you may uh, do it a little, you know, bulky texture, but it just come with experience when you do it uh, enough. So you can, you can really then, uh, you know, uh, kind of feel how much you have to put. So working maybe with a smaller um, amount is easier. See, like I'm wrapping it around my hand and then just going all the way down, overlapping. Next, um, the next uh, 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 row of the wool. And when we done with horizontal direction, I'm just trying to cover it. Don't worry about um, uh, pieces sticking out because we're gonna fold them we're gonna fold them under. So this is all horizontal um, layer is done. So the next one is gonna go vertical. See, the same way as a fabric um, usually built. So the thread going horizontal and, and vertical, the same idea is here. So now the same way we'll be laying, see I'm just, uh, separating the small, and again, not forcefully. Uh, the longer the, the end of this um, wool tips, the better they connect. See, <clears throat> when you go um, second layer, you kind of barely, barely see the orange underneath. So that's a good sign. If you see the the color, that's why I'm using colorful uh, bubble wrap because the plain one, you wouldn't see the difference, especially if your uh, wool is white. So, uh, you know, you, you see the colors like picking through, but you don't see like just the shade of it, but you don't see like orange. If you see it somewhere, then probably you need to add a little bit of um, just a little bit of uh, wool on top. So, and I'm just gonna go over and keep adding just really small touches. If I see the orange picking through, just to cover up more evenly. Okay. So now this part is all done. I'm gonna take my net. And I'm going to cover the whole entire surface with my net. And the next step, I'm going to use that um, soapy water. And first, what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to get this um, surface completely wet. So I'm pressing down and making sure all this soapy water get through the fibers. So as you see, like um, 
the, the places where the water gets through, they kind of get dark. Somewhere where it's still light, you probably need a little more water. So I'm gonna be adding a little more. So if in the beginning, you don't know how much water do you need and um, how much to add, uh, don't worry, just water. So you can always have extra towel on the side to take excess out. So here we go. So we're gonna, I'm just adding more water to this uh, white spot spots I see, uh, making sure that it's evenly where it's rule. So, and now see like um, probably the easiest way um, to use the, to use the glove because the surface is more slippery. So you very gently start like working the soapy water in. So don't, don't um, do it very softly first because what's gonna happen this, um, this net, if you apply too much effort, it's gonna start get connected to the wall. So you don't want that to happen. So I'm just keep working this soapy water in till it's like bind lightly. And then uh, when you try to remove this net, be very careful because it maybe start binding to to the surface. So what I'm gonna do, see, like I'm separating, and I'm holding one one of my hands on on the net and removing it very carefully. just like this. See, it starts grabbing a little bit. So be patient, don't go too fast because you don't wanna ruin your sample. So making sure it's... It's really uh, removed and all your wool stays in place. So see, like we have a very loose kind of, um, still very loose um, kind of sample. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna still work, working it, the soapy liquid into the wool. Again, still very gently, not of all your fibers set very well yet. So the thing is also you can do, see this extra on the side, you can just fold them in and try to work them into the main body of your sample. And see now we're trying to keep it the size, like I said, the size was like 10 by 10. So it's, it's a good size of the sample because then if you can add a little more water just to kind of, it doesn't have to be ideal, but it's nice to have the idea how much uh, your your sample gonna shrink. It really helpful for your projects, for your future projects. And different wool shrinks differently. So I suggest for every project you do, if you're using different wool, um, definitely <clears throat> start with the sample. So here's this our sample. <clears throat> Still, there, you have to be very careful. Don't try to lift it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna um, put my towel underneath. See that towel? And I'm gonna very carefully put this on top. So the whole entire, um, uh, you know, your, your sample with a bubble wrap is on top of um, towel. 
So now I'm going to make a pretty tight bundle with it. So I'm going to fold it like this. So now I'm going to use rubber bands on both sides to secure the ends of it. And I'm going to roll it. So by rolling it, um, we reinforce the connection between, um, between those uh, fibers. So when you do that, it, it's not just like rolling like this, but applying pressure. So it's actually even better if you stand up and you kind of use your body. I mean, especially when you do a big project, it's um, you really have to put energy into it. Otherwise, you know, it's not going to bind together well. So um, on the average, and see what I'm doing, I'm doing some center, and then I distributing also to the end. I'm doing that because I want to make sure that it binds um, evenly on the whole entire surface of the sample. So um, after I did probably, I would say around 50, 100 times, you know, it's pretty, you know, uh, relaxing activity, I would say. So you're gonna remove the, remove those um, bundles. And again, very carefully start releasing your bundle because look what happened. It's, it may start binding to the towel. So be very careful when you open it. So again, using one hand and opening your bundle, making sure that wool is, didn't get attached to the towel. And um, you'll see right away um, it shrunk. So now if I hold this against my bubble wrap, did you see how much it shrunk? It was like exactly, see those sides are still the same size, but this one is shrunk. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna do it, um, we're gonna, roll it other direction so so now we're gonna this we were rolling this way so now we're going um other direction again making a bundle securing it with on both sides with those rubber bands <clears throat> just makes it so much easier to do that way you know and rolling again, apply some pressure and try to use um, uh, try to use your hands evenly on the surface of the sample so that your uh, fibers would bond evenly. So then after we finish this side, again, take off the bundle, take off the rubber bands. And unfold carefully. Again, just um, if at some point you feel like your towel get too wet, you can have a couple towels, you know, handy. So see, like it starts shrinking more or less evenly, as you see, uh, and it's visible right now. So it's already shrunk. We just did two, two, two times rolling. So now what we're going to do? We're going to flip the, um, flip your sample over, put it face down, and we're going to roll it again. Because um, the reason why we're doing that, we want the surface be. Um, more or less even. So, so now making, and again, my towels still can take it, but if 
especially the first time when you're learning how much water to put, you may accidentally put too much water and your towel will be drenched. So then it's no problem. Just take another towel and use another towel. So you, you want say like this is, um, it's already third rolling we're doing. So again, applying even pressure, making sure that you're not just rolling, but you're also applying pressure on top. So, and making sure this is um, applying pressure evenly on the end of your sample and the middle of it. So now again, take it out. So on average, again, like 50 to 100 times, you know, it's, so now again, open it carefully. But you see it's, it's stored like, see, I can lift it up now. This is like a piece of fabric already. So again, we're gonna roll one more time. Uh, again, using face down, as you see, this part is, uh, you know, shrink a little bit more, so we're going to make it more even. So rolling it together. The rubber bands really help because if you don't use rubber bands, you'll see how uh, your towel is going to kind of fall off of the, you know, it's just easier, it makes it more. Um, stay together, put together when you work on that. So again, applying even pressure. And yeah, I'm not doing the, uh, exactly 100, but I'm just trying to show you the process. Um, so yeah, so now it's just, so basically, warm water, hot water, you know, if you using water is too hot, it may shrink your shirt, your wool a little bit too fast. So warm water is good, you know, and it's also helps, it's, um, it helps to combine wool uh, together quicker. So, so now we're gonna open it carefully. And here's our sample. So now we can remove that towel aside. So another um, interesting, I'm just gonna put the camera in. Um, so when, when, see now the sample is almost ready. It's not ready yet. So we can just air it out, you know, somehow airing it out this, it, um, when you're just mending this piece in your hands, it's still making, working the magic. So the, the oldest fibers, they're combining. And you can do all sorts of um, kind of manipulation, but basically, uh, you know, letting it air work with your sample a little bit. So the next and final step, um, which we're going to use, we're going to use... Um, regular uh, soap bar, which I cut it. So if you, just to make it easier for me to hold. And um, I'm gonna use some water. Again, I'm gonna switch to my camera. And um, so I'm gonna use the water and you can apply your soap on top of your sample or you can um, do it other way. So you can just put some water on your bubble wrap and then apply soap like this. Either way is good actually. So then see, it's it's pretty sturdy. I mean, still we're trying to make it a little stronger. So now we're gonna start working with the end of your sample and we're just gonna very gently, start very gently and go all the way around the perimeter of your sample to enforce the edge. 
see because the edge and remember we fold the edge so it's not going to be ideally um, straight but I kind of like that in felting because it gives you like this natural edge if you really want to make it um, very straight you can actually cut it and then kind of close the edge again um, on a straight line um, to me I personally think that um, beauty of nano felting in um, kind of this really hand uh, make look so I always leave the edges um, the way they are I'm going to try to make them perfect. So, see, uh, I work out all the way around the perimeter. And now we can work the center. If for some reason, see, like I think uh, I don't have enough soap, you can always add more water and more soap. Just be careful because sometimes when you add too much, you're, uh, uh, you know, sitting like in a puddle of the out of the side so but again you can use the towel to remove it so now see like the edges are strong so I'm holding my piece and look I can start really working it with force nothing is falling apart see the piece stays together everything looks pretty good so um also, sometimes I use, I'm not sure what the purpose, but this is like a, a plastic with a little bit of texture or any shelf lining, plastic shelf lining um, would work fine. So you basically need any plastic uh, surface with a little texture on it. So, I, I mean, bubble wrap in this case I'm using because it's nice to cut the certain size and you know what size your sample is going to be. So, so you're trying to work the surface on both sides. So you're doing the back and you flip it over and you do it again. So, so at this point, uh, you don't have to worry much about this piece falling apart because it's pretty strong. See, I can basically, you know, really wrap very, very hard and it's not falling apart. So, and, you know, just keep going for a little while, but see, like, at this point, because I already have a size, I may start using this surface too because it's pretty, see like it has texture, so I can just rub it against that. And of course, when, we, when we're done with that, um, we wanna make sure that we wash all this uh, excess soap off because you can't leave it on, on the, um, you can't leave it on your wall. Um, another thing, uh, uh, this is like uh, plastic shelving material, has a little texture on that. Um, this is pretty good. And I like that because it's pretty long. Um, so you can make a big project on that. Um, so after, after you wash uh, the axis of um, the soap, you're going to end up with uh, sample like this. As you can see, I can pretty much do anything with it. This is like, this is like real fabric now. <laughs> so you can, again, if you're not happy with the edges, you can cut it, make it more even, but I kind of like that natural look. So you start the project, you know exactly how much um, your um, wool gonna shrink. So you prepare it and you know, if you experiment and again with texture, this is a good um, way to do it because this project started exactly from what it is. I was making samples and just, you know, experimenting echo printing on that. And then I'd come out with something uh, bigger than just a small project. 
Um, so this is um, all about Nuna Felting. I was very happy to teach you a class and um, please um, check out my website, um, oksanafiberstudio.com. And um, I have a lot there about my projects and my work um, in my, um, you know, on my website. So this is...